Oh, hey. How, how's it going? I, I know there's a lot of boxes here, but um, we, we can do it. We can conquer this. Unboxing episode three. So in the first episode, we unboxed seven animals. In the second episode, we unboxed like eight or something. And today we're going to be unboxing even more, but it'll be distributed across multiple days because not all the reptiles are arriving on the same day. There were a lot of controversies in the other ones. Episode one. One of those issues was whether animals can breathe in a cardboard box. One sec. This is a box of cereal. My favorite, in fact, Honey Bunches of Oats. Not sponsored, but they're pretty good. Honey Bunches of Oats come in a cardboard box like every other cereal. You open up this cardboard box. This is a bag. Why is there a bag inside this cardboard box? Because you don't want your cereal to be stale. In order to avoid having stale cereal, mm, that's good. You put it in a bag because cardboard is not airtight. What makes cereal sale? Oxygen. What gets inside a cardboard box? Oxygen. What do animals need? What do animals need to stay alive? Oxygen. This plastic bag is here. Now it's a little aggressive. This plastic bag is here to keep the oxygen out of the cardboard box. Therefore, what I'm saying is all of these boxes have no problem getting oxygen. Because they're made of cardboard. The an this is a very long way of saying that animals can breathe in cardboard boxes and styrofoam because they're both breathable materials which both allow oxygen to get through the surface. Therefore, none of the animals suffocate on the way. Thank you for your concern. That was the stupidest question I've seen in a long time. Let's get started unboxing. What it do everybody, it's your boy. This one's taking place over two days and I'm gonna show you the first day first, which has four animals, and then we'll come back to these 16 animals. So let's start with day one. Now apparently, not everyone here likes my knife skills when it comes to the size of knife and the way I use it. And in other words, cutting towards myself. with blades and I know how to safely cut a box. I'm trying not to be too offended that you don't believe me and you should be glad that you're on the other side of a screen and not in this room. Like these reptiles. <laughs> or these reptiles. No, I don't, I don't have a replacement 40. I'm not going to break that one. Let's get started. But with all that said, we do need to get started. These animals have been patiently waiting in the background. I would recommend watching the first two before you watch this one. You don't have to, because you can already figure out what I'm doing, but there's a lot of unboxings and it's cool to watch them all in a row, in my opinion. Um, My usual spiel at the beginning, Emerald Scales is a company that takes in almost any animal from anywhere in the USA. Uh, we rehabilitate it, we help rehome it, and uh, we do what it needs to become happy and healthy. From there, we <laughs> get them delivered to us. 
it's cared for, and then once it's ready, it goes up on our site or multiscales.com. From here, they're available for sale to any credible reptile keeper. Uh, and basically, you can purchase any animal that you're interested in, uh, and then we verify you to make sure you're truly ready for that animal, and we ship it off to your house. Now, in order to keep up with demand for happy, healthy reptiles, because it seems to be hard to find good sellers, we are starting to breed certain animals. The first for sale now is axolotls, and uh, we've been breeding. I'm going to do a full video on that, but if you're interested, you can check out the site and see the axolotls available. We have 15 available from the start, uh, half of those sold out in the first day, so there might not be any left as the time of, at the time of watching this, but these are going to be some other things we're going to have. Uh, like this juvenile ball python. Uh, they also left a note. They knew this was going to be in an unboxing video. They printed their own advertisement for the video. Reptile Club. Interested? Group me. Seeking prospective members and leaders. I don't know what this is. And this is probably stolen stolen image. Anyway, this is Spinny, the spider ball python. I took her in from a previous owner struggling to feed her back in May. Be cautious, she has bitten herself while eating, or, or striking, even for a frozen thawed prey. I don't know if I can open this with a sword. So spider ball pythons are probably the most controversial snake morph in general. Uh, they're known for neurological issues, according to some people like me, which you can see in a video I did on spider ball pythons. And we're kind of wary taking them in because we don't want to actually sell them on emerald scales. Um, because it looks like we're promoting the sale, it looks like we're profiting off of them, which is why I'm setting up a new site just for spider ball pythons and other animals with neurological disorders. And all of that money would get funneled into basically increasing the awareness about spider ball pythons. This will be through videos, advertisements, stuff like that. That's where the money for the sale of spider ball pythons will go. And this is the third one that we've gotten so far. He looks no different. A lot of people say that it's extremely rare to find a super bad wobble, but so far it's just constant videos and constant photos and constant individual species here with the exact issues that you see, like corkscrewing, wobbling, and he has a very bad corkscrew. Um, my spider ball python, as they said with theirs, is so bad that it ends up biting itself when it eats. Um, stuff like this is cannot be bred out. Even the experts that support the spider ball python agree that it cannot be disconnected from the gene. The wobble and the corkscrew and everything, even if it's barely there, it's always going to be there if there's a spider ball python. There's also a long list of other animals with these issues. Anything with spinner or bee also has spider in it. And other animals like the champagne ball python and a lot of others have similar issues. But um, here's another prime example. So uh, isn't that great to see? Not really, but if there is going to be a bad one, I'm glad we're the ones that can get it so that we can just keep, keep promoting how, how much they suck. Next up, let's go to this big one. This is a lizard. It'll be one of the largest lizards, maybe the largest lizard we've ever gotten. Oh wait, I cut away from myself, hold on. Let me make sure my heart's like right there. <laughs> this is not very sharp. This is from Amazon. And as much as I love Papa Jeff Bezos, his swords could use some sharpening. This one is coming from Maryland. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that, we got more essays. Uh, last time some people used their homework as padding and I review their schoolwork. Let's see how you did. This is for English. Oh my God. I don't, <laughs> I don't know who graded this, but they said disgusting, boring, too descriptive. No substance. You are objectively wrong. I'm, I'm gonna check every piece of paper. I forgot there was an animal in here. Um, apparently he was in a... Very... Bad... Apparently he's in a bad mood. Maybe he'll want some cereal. Also, I'm gonna put this somewhere else. Oh my. He is large. I am spooked. I don't know how to get him out. Oh my god. We did it! Hey, what you doing? Oh, he's fine. This is an Argentine black and white tegu. So we have four tegus right now, but they're all very little. They're like this big, but this is a big one. So this person actually didn't give any reasoning as to why they were rehoming. Uh, all I know is that they had them for about two years. Um, I knew I liked tegus, but I like big tegus even more. This is the first time I've gotten a handle on this big. Nice thing about tegus is they are very frequently a lot more comfortable with people as 
as he runs away from me. Now, they can obviously have bad attitudes if they're cared for poorly or if they're raised poorly, but he looks very healthy. Two out of two healthy animals so far. Admittedly, the first has some permanent issues, but it's not the fault of anyone except the breeder, so. Ooh, I'll get him on his way to an enclosure. Why am I using a key? This is unacceptable. This one's coming from New York, which is actually our top selling state. Um, I don't know why, but the majority of our customers are from New York. For, for some reason, they put them, the leopard gecko in a, in a bag. Usually you put the geckos in delis, but that's okay. And there we go. Just a normal leopard gecko. Actually, it might be a hypo. We are getting dozens of geckos over the next period of time. And thankfully, leopard geckos are pretty affordable, so a lot of people can buy them. It's a good choice, so. I'm glad that we're getting a lot of geckos in and there will be a lot to come. Next is also a leopard gecko, but for some reason it's in a, in a bigger box. It's, maybe it's a big gecko. Let's find out. If he can survive my swordsman skills. Ooh, 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 woo. It's a very small leopard gecko. I don't know why it's in such a big box. So unfortunately, this one is not as healthy. He doesn't look that bad. But he's not going to die tomorrow like some of the animals that we... That we get. So this person was gonna send us a Chinese water dragon and a leopard gecko. They ended up only sending the gecko. Uh, I'm not sure why. Let's see. Oh, because the water dragon died. It took a long time to ship some of these because of weather and uh, holidays. And then the other one is a leopard gecko. They've been breeding leopard geckos for three years and haven't had problems. All of a sudden she lost appetite and might have metabolic bone disease. She does not have metabolic bone disease. All of her joints look fine. Pretty People ask how I identify it and it's really easy. You just look for the joints and the bones and the spine and if see if anything's misshapen. And if it is, it's most likely due to metabolic bone disease, which we've talked about a lot. That's probably the term I've said more than any other. She's pretty weak overall, but We've had a lot worse. Um, I think she will be fine. What might have happened is I have had leopard geckos eat the same thing their whole life and then all of a sudden they switch and they don't want crickets anymore. Now they want mealworms or dubia roaches or they don't want dubias. Now they want superworms. Um, so maybe they just didn't try enough insects. So like everything, we would keep this animal away and on its own for a bit to make sure it's completely healthy. And in that time, we can just try every insect we have. And if none of those work, uh, we can look at treating her for something like parasites. I don't know how she would have gotten parasites if it was sudden, um, or we could go further and find other treatment. And what I try to do is with each animal, I try to film their entire process of being here. So then I can make kind of little collective videos of each one. Like there's four leopard geckos right now that have gone through a lot of care, and there will probably be videos on them. Interestingly, her tail, is not the thinnest tail we've seen, but you can see a lot more of her spine than other geckos. So it's like she lost more weight in her body than she did in her tail. Either way, that's interesting. And I will get her in a nice comfy enclosure uh, so that she can start being offered food and rest from her little journey here. That's the first four. I'll see you when I got more. That rhymes. We're back. It's time for day two of unboxing. And these are generally my favorite days to look forward to because it's really fun to shoot and edit and do every part of this. But this is a stressful one. This is a large box. This is a small box. This is a really big box. This is, there's a lot of boxes. Um, let's hold the big box so that you watch more of the video, which you could just scrub through and look for the big box, but that's no fun. Wait till the big box actually comes so you can see what's in the big box. There's a big box here. Let's continue where we left off and I need a bigger table. I'm gonna just start at random. Just kidding, I'm gonna start with this box because there's three animals in. So the four other animals that I unboxed are doing quite well. And, and I've shipped off a handful since then so we should have space. Where is my knife? Just kidding, still not using a knife. This box here has three animals, one of which is one that I don't think we've ever gotten. The other of which is one that I'm not a big fan of, and the last one is another animal. Let's start. I have official word on the waiting list of sending animals to Emerald Scales. And the waiting list goes through February right now, so it's the middle of January. 
but there are so many people that it's backed up quite a bit. Now the question is why do so many people have to rehome animals? There's tons of reasons people have to. So starting off, this is a little Western hog nose. It's um, pretty cool. It does not look like a normal. I'm not great with hog nose morphs and personally, I'm not a great hog nose fan. That's because I am um, allergic to their saliva. So it's not a severe allergy. I don't have to go to the hospital, but I have been bit by a hog nose before and uh, it, it kind of knocked me out a bit. Um, it actually chewed on me in a video. And then after finishing that video, I uh, got so dizzy and my head was hurting so much and I got nauseous and I had to lie down for a few hours because uh, I literally just couldn't move around. So that was an interesting experience. I was ready to go to the doctor if I had to, but basically I can't handle hognose snakes. They're not all going to be nippy, but the ones that we got before were super nippy and just love to chew on you, which seems somewhat common with them. So basically what I'm saying is I'm going to keep this in the deli cup. So hognoses are very cool and that one is very pretty. Um, and they're much more fun as adults. Didn't, well, okay, maybe not fun. They look a lot cooler as adults. Next up, the other two do not have any um, saliva that'll hurt me. I also have reaction to Savannah Monitor saliva, so that's fun. I just get itchy with that though. And this, oh, okay. Hello. This is one of the few boas that we've gotten. We don't get many boas, and um, specifically, I need to look on the box to see what kind of boa. It's a Longic. It's a Longicoa boa? I don't, I've never seen that name before, but whatever it is, that's what it is. This is um, a very healthy young boa. I can go ahead and sex it. So sexing uh, boas like this is really easy. You just feel near their cloaca, run your finger down and see if you feel any little pops. I'm not feeling any pops here, so I'm pretty sure this is a young female. And uh, assuming this is like a BCI or a BCC, which is a boa constrictor, constrictor or boa constrictor imperator, or I guess now they're BI and BC, but whatever. I'm assuming it's gonna get a similar size, which would be like five to eight feet for a female. So that's cool and they're super strong. Uh, not the strongest I felt, that would probably be our Burmese Python, but the amount of strength just in his tail is kind of ridiculous. It also has a great temperament. Uh, although boas often do have good temperaments, we've gotten some that are just super angry. It was an adult male that just hated me and he would try and bite me at any chance he got. Um, ironically, getting bit by big boas is a lot less scary than getting bit by like little snakes. I don't know why, but honestly, I kind of prefer it. And it, it barely even bled. It healed up in like two days. This one is one that we get a little more often. Ooh, wow, but it's a cool morph. This is a pastel calico ball python. I've never seen a pastel calico in person. I'm not big on morphs. I'm just fine with normals for the most part, and often I don't really seek out certain morphs or anything. I'll just find them that looks cool. Especially since we don't breed snakes, it's it's easy to just be satisfied with something that isn't even necessarily worth that much. But this pastel calico is admittedly really cool. It's got completely pitch black spots, and then they're surrounded by the brightest yellow I've ever seen on a ball python, other than a straight albino. But straight albinos kind of bore me. Um, this is a lot more interesting. I am quite a fan. It also has completely white spots. I think that's why it's looking so cool, is because there's pitch black, there's pure white, and then there's those super bright yellows in between, and they look extremely healthy. So this person said that she went to the vet because she kept opening her mouth, and that was it. Nothing wrong, she just opened her mouth. And then the vets put her on antibiotics, probably Tazisef. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, but her reason for your homing is she got it from her friend and she's not interested in ball pythons. So it looks like they're all healthy, even if she for some reason got 10 Tazisef injections. I don't know why. I am assuming it's Tazisef, but I would bet my money that, that it was. But I'm glad she looks really good. Um, even if she was hopped up with an unnecessary drug, that was probably doing more harm than good. But I'll get into that in a different video. If you're wondering, I make a huge mess in these videos and I hate cleaning them up, as you can see from Exhibit A. I'm gonna speed through these two boxes and then I'll do the big box. I'll go ahead and tell you what this one is. Uh, this one is an aquatic turtle, but you'll get to see what species it is in a sec. Now, the house I'm renting has a really stupid HOA rule where you're not allowed to have open tubs of water outside, most likely because of mosquitoes or something, but even the ones that have filtration outside were not allowed. And this person also put their homework. Oh wait, no, they put their schedule for the week. I'm, I'm gonna look for Easter eggs on these. At some point, someone's gonna leave some little Easter eggs. And so because of the stupid HOA rule, um, I've moved all the aquatic turtles to my parents' house. We have a lot of turtles just brew mating over the winter. 
and it's already getting warm, so they're kind of becoming active again. So this is a redded slider. Uh, it looks super healthy. The shell looks good. Uh, pretty small, and I'm happy to say it looks good. So there are multiple species that we have to add extra fees to, including redded sliders. But the one that is charged the biggest fee because of the time and space and money and time and space and time and space that it takes is in that box. And that probably gives you a hint as to what it is. I'm impatient. Let's come back to this one. Let's do the big one. It's actually not that heavy. It's heavier than most, but it's lighter than you would expect. Let's go. I am... Okay, so it's possible that the animal is smaller than we thought and we put it in the wrong size box. But from the pictures, it looked big. We got a note from the animal itself. Hello, my name is Edward or Eddie for short. I respond to both. I love swimming, climbing, and shoulder rides. My favorite foods are turnip greens, red peppers, and butternut squash. I was purchased at Petco July 3rd, 2017. I've been handled daily. I still get a little aggressive in my home, but that's more rare now. He's moving around. Okay, he is smaller than I thought, so he doesn't need this big of a box. But it's good that we sent him in too big of a box instead of too small of a box. That's good, but for the sake of the video, I guess you could say it's bad, just because you expected a massive animal, and I did too. Sir, are you okay? Eddie. Edward. Eddie. Ed, come here. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Good man. I was gonna say good boy, but this is a man. This is a red iguana. Uh, similar to the green iguana, but it's red. Now, Eddie is pretty long, and he actually has a full tail. Look at that. He looks very healthy. His legs are thickums and full, and now that he's out of the box, he looks a lot more calm, and his claws are sharp. Okay, I'm gonna trim them before I hit. Be ow, ow, oh god. Having my face this close to a brand new iguana is probably not good, but I'm kind of stuck. I'm gonna go get a snack. Be right back. I'm gonna... Ow! Ow! Take. Take. He doesn't want any food right now, but I'm sure he'll just adjust for a few minutes and then start eating. Iguanas are one that we can very rarely take because they are huge and need so much space. He's cool and he's healthy, which means that he shouldn't take too long compared to others. Overall, all of the shipping um, that people have done has really improved in quality. Uh, hopefully that's partially due to these videos where I kind of just completely tear apart people's shipping, literally and metaphorically. Oh wow. Okay, well I thought the other morph of ball python was cool, but this one might be cooler. We'll see. I don't know what this snake did. I don't know where to untie the bag. What did they... How did... What is this? I still can't get to it. Okay, we did it. Here, woo! Here are two ball pythons. This one is a lot cooler than this one, no offense. But it looks like today is just the day of really cool ball python morphs. If I were to guess on the top of my head, I would say it's a pastel butter? That's my guess. But I very much approve of this morph. It's super bright yellow. The other one had the blacks and whites, but I have to say, just all yellow without being an albino is really cool too. Meanwhile, there's this dude just hanging out a little smaller. And it's got little hinges of green and yellow. Let's see if I was right. I'll look up their email. I wasn't that far off. This one is a Super Pastel Lesser, and this one is a Mojave Het Desert. I, I was pretty far off, but unfortunately they're moving to an apartment and they're limited on space and restrictions so they couldn't take them. I'm happy to say that healthy snakes seems to be a trend today, which makes me very satisfied. Um, less work for us, which means that more animals can be shipped out more quickly. Uh, we still keep them here at least for a number of weeks. Most of them are here for a month plus. This one just has some stuck shed on the bottom of her head. They both look like they've been cared for super well. Um, they've likely both been on frozen thaw because neither of them have any damage from that. Um, if, if, you perp if you feed live just because you want to and not because you have to, you you're an actual idiot and I don't like you on a personal level. I was gonna say nothing personal, but it's literally personal, and I don't like you, period. But we can talk if you want. It's funny, because the female's just super active and the male hasn't moved at all. Uh, he was all just balled up in that pillowcase and it was impossible. This box has three animals in it. 
It's two species, one species of gecko, one species of snake. If you took a guess as to what they were, you'd likely be right. It's funny, we have this exact morph of leopard gecko, and these two are identical. Their patterns are barely different. This person had to rehome because they're moving to an apartment that does not allow reptiles, which seems to be the most common reason today. This is probably the second most common snake species to keep, a corn snake, um, but we don't actually get them that often. And it's a really cool one. It's got super dark reds and oranges, so I, I like it. Um, all these look extremely healthy too, so this is a good day. Last time there were a bunch of sick ones, this time, we're, we're rolling with the healthy ones. Feels good. Oh yeah. Seal of approval from ya boy. So this one is likely not an adult. I don't know if it's male or female. Um, corn snakes are one of the snakes that I don't know how to sex. I, I mean, I know how, but I haven't actually done it myself because I don't have a probing kit. Often you can just tell from the length of the tail. Based on that, I'm guessing it's female, but we can likely confirm that later. And then both leopard geckos, we've got male and male. They must be siblings, because they're so similar. I wonder why they got two males with the same morph. Corn snake looks very good, very active, and that nice long tongue, um, extremely healthy. And both apogeckas are nice and chunky. I'll leave them in here for now. One is darker than the other on the head. Uh, huge tails, but they're not overweight. They don't have calcium sacs. This person knew what they were doing for sure. And I'm very happy with what they sent, but I'm extremely sad that they had to get rid of them because of um, their new apartment, but I understand how hard it is to find a place that allows reptiles. In fact, finding the house that we were in now took contacting over 50 different properties, um, only three of which said yes to reptiles, and then one of which ended up changing their mind and saying no, and then the other one looked like a prison cell. So basically this is the only place. I wouldn't have even honestly picked this house, but I only had this house because it allows reptiles, so. This box has four animals. <laughs> Same reason, uh, this person moved and their landlord changed their mind. So I guess, shout out to our landlord for going against the grain and allowing reptiles. Cause even the turtle problem is not the fault of the landlord. They're fine with it. It's just HOA. <laughs> this leopard gecko looks very similar to the others. Um, super healthy, had a little bathroom break on the way. This leopard gecko looks like a Max Snow or something. Uh, this this one's a Trimper Albino, I think. And this one's in a Cool Whip cup, because we didn't send enough delis. Oh wow, that one's cool. I'm gonna take a risk and put the leopard gecko on the table. They often walk off the table with no regard of the fact that they are on the table. So I'll keep a close eye. I forgot what this fourth animal was. I think it's a snake. Ah, <laughs> it's not a snake. It's a bearded dragon. Uh, just a normal bearded dragon, super light colors, and looks healthy as well. All three leopard geckos look beautiful, and they're all, they're a cool assortment of morphs. Like, if I were to have three leopard geckos, I'd be very happy with this lineup. I'm sad that their landlord is a big dum-dum, but... <sighs> yeah, they were thinking the bearded dragon had metabolic bone disease, but I don't see anything. It looks good. Its tail's a little curved, but it's like barely curved. It's really super mild and nothing to worry about. Don't do it. I see you, he's thinking about it. And by that I mean he's not thinking about anything. Back in the Cool Whip cup, my guy. Let's conquer this one. Uh, they got a lot of hair in the tape. Admittedly, I've gotten cat hair in the tape while shipping before. So I, I think that's dog hair. Let's see if this rehoming reason is due to a landlord. I, I, thought, I thought it was gonna be a joke, but due to new housing, I have to rehome them. This isn't usually the reason. Normally the reason is like relationship where a person won't allow animal or they got a new job or either they have a bunch of time taken away or maybe they're not making enough now to sustain the animal. But no, in this one everyone's just moving. So I guess January is the year of moving or something. I mean month of moving. A lot of people are like off to college, but I, I don't know when the college semester starts. But I know of a lot of people um, that just sneak their animals in their dorm and like keep them in a tub, like a nice tub, and then just slide the tub under the bed when it gets checked, so. Not that I'm condoning it, but hey, why not? I guess that's condoning it. I don't know. Yoink. Mm, ooh, wow. Today is not only the day of stupid landlords, but it's also the day of very orange and yellow animals. This is a very pretty bearded dragon. Let me move the katana and see how speedy he is. Not that fast. He's extremely active. He's still nice and warm from the heat pack. They did a good job taking the pack on to make sure it does not fall. 
they use duct tape actually, and it almost came off. It started. Um, duct tape does not stick that well to styrofoam, so it's better to wrap tape all the way around the piece of styrofoam, but not too bad. So statistically speaking, based on the other openings today, um, the three final boxes represent three final stupid landlords. Let's see if I'm right. What do they think is gonna happen? Do they know what dogs and cats do? Okay, so this one is a different reason. This is probably a worse reason. Uh, this ball python is not eaten in a while, but from the pictures, it doesn't look awful. This animal may be sick, but I'm still using my sick katana. I almost cut my hand there. You, you might have, maybe you saw that. Yeah. Don't worry, there's still two more boxes for me to gravely hurt myself. This one smells weird. And the heat pack though. I was a little anxious on this one because the box just smelled bad. And I was kind of scared we'd have a dead on arrival. But uh, nope, it's alive. Quite pretty. It's so many yellow and white snakes today. <sighs> Frick. Okay. Uh, before I said that I didn't like albinos that much because they're a lot more like less interesting to me than the other more This is a really cool animal. It has like white as the main color and yellow as the accents Also those bright red eyes. Um, now you can probably tell this is an underweight snake It also has some damage on the back of its scales. Yeah, it's underweight um, They've had it for over a year and it definitely lost weight faster than most do because it's only been off for I think a month and a half. So they tried different things. I think they tried live. I think they tried assist feeding. We do have more resources that we can use um, thanks to just learning over the years. Very worst case scenario, if it gets super bad, we can syringe feed. But before then, we can try assist feeding. And the first thing we do is simply try offering frozen thawed because sometimes that works. Other times we'll try live and then we try assist. And then if it gets worse, we try force feeding. Uh, if it's strong enough, if it's not strong enough, we do syringe feeding and then try and figure out the reason that it's not eating. Sometimes that's husbandry, but the health of the snake looks really good other than weight. It doesn't look dehydrated. The eye caps are a little wrinkly. There's no shed on them now, but you can sometimes tell when there's been shed stuck on the eye before. It does look like it's had stuck shed in the past, but it doesn't now and it looks good. It has energy. It's not too strong. It's obviously weak, but it can hold itself up. It can move around just fine. It's pretty quick, so most likely this ball python's gonna be just fine. And the snake from the past video is still just hanging in there and chilling and enjoying some syringe feeding. Two more boxes, and that'll be the end of episode three. And yes, this is a series. I feel like making three parts officially makes it a series. So what have you people done? Apparently you like these. Got a nice little tiny box. I think this is the only tiny box today. This is a seven inch box. So I think this, for, for some, these aren't the heat packs that we sell. I don't, I don't recognize this brand of heat pack. There's two lines and they're thinner. I'm guessing it's dead. I'm. This is the, the very first time I've unboxed a dead on arrival animal in an unboxing video. And this is the fear that everyone has when they're shipping animals because there can be a dead on arrival. Uh, I, I smelled the box and I immediately said it's dead. Um, I didn't even see it. It just, you could tell from the smell. I don't know what heat packs these are. These are not the heat packs we send. We send Uniheat 72 hour large green heat packs and they've never malfunctioned unless you send below freezing. These heat packs, they put two and I don't know what they are, but they're not hot. They're I, they're cold. They're room temperature. That's what I was really confused when I opened it because it's they're not working. They might have opened the heat pack early and then realized that they weren't supposed to open it yet. And then they were like, okay, I got to get more heat packs. So then they got these, but these are not you in a heat. And normally when people do that, they tell us and we send them a new heat pack of the exact one that you should use. This is not the one that you're supposed to buy. I will take a close look at this gecko. Now, it honestly, it doesn't look that unhealthy. It's actually upside down in the deli. Um, the deli was right set up, but the gecko is upside down. And to describe it, it's pretty much turned sideways and it just looks like it's sleeping, but it's obviously not. So the weather where it's coming from, the lows are often in the 30s and 40s. Um, we always wait for a day that's at least 40, but even if it was 40, it's only going to survive if the, if the right supplies is used. Um, so sadly, this is a case of incorrect packaging. It's not, I'm trying to think of how many dead on arrivals we've had. I think of the three, 350 animals shipped to and from 
maybe even 400 at this point. I think we've had five. Um, so that's 1.2%, I guess, so if I did the math right in my head, which obviously five is, that's still five animals. It's definitely not enough animals to turn me off from doing this, but uh, it is sad that it had to happen. But uh, likely what happened is the gecko was brought to the center. These heat packs just never even got hot. Like it, it literally just feels like a bag of rice. It's, there's no temperature to it. And the weird thing, even if a heat pack freezes, it heats back up after it's unfrozen. But it's 60 something degrees here, um, which means that the gecko died quickly in shipping before it was even in North Carolina and that these packs never even started working. So if you do end up shipping with us, please use the exact brand of everything. We send you everything you need. Also, they put two of them. Even if, if this was hot, this would be bad. If you put two heat packs in a small box, even if you put two in a box this size, if it's not the right temperature, this will kill it and it'll overheat. I'm, it, all around, it's very confusing. I'm gonna try and diagnose and find that information further. But sadly, not everything works out perfectly um, when doing stuff like this and it can really it can definitely ruin your mood so i'm sad that that happened near the end um i mean i'm ha sad it happened at all working with live animals is weird especially sick animals because because sometimes you'll see animals in just such bad conditions they go completely numb to it um, i wouldn't say i'm completely numb but i'm th the first time an animal died at emerald scales um it was awful it, it just ruined my week i'm still sad over that one until now, yeah, you, you get you get used to things. Not things you want to get used to, but it'll it'll happen sometimes. And here is the final arrival of the day. Thank you for taking him. His name is Zer Zevrin Zarin Zevrin. Every name or every animal on Emerald Scales does have a name when we sell them. If we remember the name and if we can find it, we always keep the name. So this is this is Forever Zevrin, unless the new owner changes it. I can't tell if that's a V or an R, but he does not look like a normal either. He's got lots of yellow and lots of gray, which is definitely today's theme, along with the theme of really bad landlords. He's looking good. His tail is full. We got no stuck shed. We got lots of energy and a little bit of anger. Zevran is the final one today to finish us off. That was a lot of species and a lot of animals and my voice and throat is tired now. This actually took over an hour, an hour and a half to unbox all these. So I'm ready for a little break and these will promptly get into their new enclosures. We have new animals available every week on the site and most likely there's gonna be an episode four to this, so. So about 17 of the animals were perfect, no issues. Two of the animals had little things like the albino ball python and I think one that I'm forgetting. Maybe it was all, all but one good. And then there's the unfortunate leopard gecko to kind of finish us off and then we've got him. Such a weird morph. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you want updates on both videos and new animals, go to the link emeraldscales.com slash newsletter where you can add your email and uh, I send you updates one or two times a week. That is the best way to stay updated. It's the best way for me to directly get to you. The YouTube bell icon thing won't get in the way because it doesn't always work. If you'd like to do that, there are now 10,000 people on the mailing list. So thanks to those, you can join them and be part of that group and uh, get a lot more info. If you're in the USA, you can buy an animal or you can send us an animal if you need to, but there is a waiting list through January, so, or through February. Um, if you're watching this in the future, who knows, maybe Emerald Scales is dead. Maybe Emerald Scales is big. But either way, check out the site and see what's going on um, and, and look forward to future videos, I guess. But that'll be it. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.